start uh, the September 14th meeting of the City of Manistee Parks Commission. Katie, would you mind calling the roll, please? Sure. Liz Lasky? Present. Karen Mao? Here. Karen Peltola? Here. Lainey Rosca is absent. <coughs> Kelly Grevy? Here. Tim O'Connor? Absent. John Beach? Here. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> I'd like to ask for approval of the, agen uh, the agenda for tonight's meeting. And I'd like to add one thing. Uh, the tree commission, uh, we went to a tree commission meeting, so c under new business, could we add uh, the tree commission? So I call for approval of the agenda with the uh, addition of the tree commission. Well, we need an amendment for that, though. We need an amendment for that, for the addition. Everybody know? Let's approve the existing agenda and then we'll talk to the amendment. Okay. We'll just put it on there. Make that motion. When it comes. I'll second. I'll second. Thank you. And to amend it to include the tree commission. Thank you. I'll make the motion. I'll second. Thank you. Both motions passed. Uh, approval of the minutes from the Thursday, August 17th meeting that Katie had emailed out. Is there a motion to approve the minutes? Has any, everybody had a chance to read them? Mm -hmm. Someone like to make a motion to approve the minutes? So moved. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Go ahead. Minutes approved. Uh, any citizens or public comment? Pratt, um, 355 Second Street, Manistee. So tonight, um, I'm not here as a council member, but I just wanted to come back to the Parks Committee and touch base with you guys. Mm -hmm. um, I wanted to apologize as a citizen first and foremost, and then as in my role as an individual council member, that the Parks Committee was treated the way that it was at a, the last couple city council meetings ago. I know you guys felt under attack I was just as surprised as you guys were with some of that stuff, so I don't want you to think that everybody on city council knew. Um, there are a lot of positive things you guys have done, and I hope that continues. Um, as far as you know, working with the library, putting together those activities, I think those are things that if you guys come to council and have conversations with individual council members, we can help support whether you need funding or budgets for those things, just let us know, because those are all positive things. In my district, I've heard nothing but compliments with the Parks Commission, um, and all the positive things like Morton's Park, the amphitheater, marina improvements, all of those things, citizens did take note, and they are giving credit. So I know there's sometimes those negative comments, but for all the negative, there's positive out there, it's just sometimes the negatives louder. So I just wanted you guys to know that. Thank you. Thanks. Yep. Thank you. Thank you for attending. It's nice to see both you and Jim Kabowski here as councilmen. So thank you both for being here. Any other citizens want to comment on anything? Correspondence. Uh, we received one piece of correspondence, and it was from the Banstee Municipal Marina inviting everybody, <coughs> the public, and the parks to their open house this Saturday, September 16th, 3 to 6, just to stop by to see the newly renovated facility and to support both the Harbor Commission and the Parks Commission. Um, there was one other piece of information, and it was Jen Teller, who did a good job for many years on adopt a park sent in her resignation. Yeah, she no longer, she has sold her house and moved, so she um, has resigned as her adopt a park position. I should have, um, I can look up that correspondence to read later. She wrote a very nice letter and she will no longer be doing that. So thank you to Jen Teller and her husband and for all the work and hours that they put in at First Street Beach. So hopefully someone else will pick that up because she will be missed. Uh, I believe that's it for correspondence. The committee reports, uh, Morton Park. Jeff, do you want to speak to that? Oh, uh, I have all the <laughs> photos of Morton Park if anybody wants to see them as well. Okay. For any reason. Okay. Karen took 16 We're photos not. of Morton Park for to go in front of the Tree Commission and maybe we show them at that time or do you think they'd, go ahead, Jeff. And Karen has the park if you want to, if you need photos to. 
the layout to show, tell us anything. <laughs> <clears throat> well, as you're aware, the uh, community bill is scheduled for October 30 and 31st for both Morton and Duffy Park for the playground structures. Um, we tried to pre-assemble a bunch of the benches and picnic tables and my plan was to get them out there earlier but i know you guys went through looking at colors all the bolts and hardware and nuts and everything is all combined and so we're not sure what goes to where so uh i will likely need to wait until uh sinclair gets up here and helps us sort all that stuff out and then i think we can probably get a lot of that assembled during those two days and if not you know during that week after so um uh, the chair had asked me yesterday if i had a, a kind of a reconciliation on the grant amount i don't have that um to be able to recite numbers but we were slightly under budget on just about every line item um, if you recall when we got some initial pricing in, it was very high, and we thought we were going to have to trim st some stuff back out. Um, when we did our final selections and then the, the color selections, the prices had come back down to their normal levels, and so we were able to fund um, every aspect of that project with one exception. Um, the senior softball group had, uh, on their own, solicited from a contractor to refurbish the infield of the north softball field and that was roughly twenty three thousand dollars a little bit more than that um we put that amount in the grant amount and then the softball group had pledged to raise four thousand dollars of match money on their own um <clears throat> i started asking around with our engineering firm with the Manistee Saints, uh, with the Manisteria Public Schools, and tried to get a, a list of contractors that specialize in, in athletic fields. And really what I was hoping is that they would um, look at that field and tell us the best way to renovate it, the best way to make it um, um, more user friendly. Because what happens is the stone dust that's there gets compacted as it dries. And then it, it's harder to play on, especially if you have older knees and joints. But it also, um, if it's not drug and, and, you know, really doctored up just before, every time you play, you can get weird hops on it and stuff. Um, I then met with um, a representative group from the uh, senior softball. And their list and the list that I had come up with for contractors was almost identical. I think we had one different. So I solicited all of those, asked for requests for um, proposals on what they would recommend. We only had one that was interested. Um, he came up actually over the 4th of July, re reviewed the field, um, made his suggestions, but his quote was 85,000. So I've been working, um, trying to figure out a different avenue to make that field better and make it more uh, playable for the seniors. So when I talked with the contra contractor, I asked them for some suggestions because that's their expertise. Um, he recommended that that type of dust or stone dust should be nail dragged. So I've ordered a nail drag and um, when that comes in, we're gonna, we plan on dragging the field, both of those softball fields probably monthly and hoping that that helps. And then now that I've got a recommended scope of work from, from what I'll call an expert company, um, I'm going to ask some local contractors to see if they could do that work and wouldn't charge as much and maybe get us a little closer. So um, other than that, um, I think everything's on track. So cool. make sure that I think you have to work from the outside in because the material gets dragged a little bit with the, the, the drag maybe and it helps to crown the field so yeah. the water moves away if I remember correctly yeah the, the in general um, and I won't get into all the details but in general when you drag the field and you've all seen people out there with tractors and quads and stuff but when you drag that field if you go too fast 
the stones will bounce across the surface and they migrate into the grass. And so I've never noticed it before until he pointed it out to me, but if you walk out there, there's just a little bit of a hump right in the grass. And so he said, you know, we should take out that 10, 15 feet of topsoil, regrade it, replant it. What he recommended is um, if you go up to uh, Clyber Field up at Reeds Park, that's a different, that's a brown type of stone mix up there. That stays less compacted and is, uh, it's a higher quality than the straight limestone dust that we've got in ours. Um, so what he was recommending, and we did corings on the field and it's pretty thin. So what he recommended was take out the existing stone, set it aside, dig it out, put the existing stone as a base and then put new stuff on top and then do like you said, make sure the field's crown, make sure it goes all the way, um, you know, a clay batter's box, a clay pitcher's mound. So if we were gonna do spend money and I was trying to do it proper and, and kind of encourage more use down there. But we'll see if we can figure out a different method. Yeah, Very wow. expensive. Wow. Yeah. Well, good. Um, did we make any headway on that parking lot at all? Did, we, did you have a chance to contact? So I've talked to the city manager and what we plan to do is to sit down with Morton and figure out a plan going forward and Right now, Morton has, through a volunteer, has pledged to, to do some construction, but wanted an engineering design. We've got an engineering quote for the design, but I don't have a line item in the budget. So um, what I had um, planned is, usually when I get into uh, April, May, I can see where we're at in the individual budgets and I can see if we've got room for that. And if not, um, it could be something that we request in a future uh, budget, um, or there may be there may be some other way we can get, accomplish that. And someone from the parks, I think, I'd like to be on that too. When you meet, and if we called Mr. Logan, I wonder if they're going to budget for it. Would they? If we approached them now, would they make sure they had it in their budget to do the contracting work? Get a commitment from everybody that we're going to do it next spring. Yeah, when I plant managers prior to Mr. Logan um, had offered similar stuff at that park, and <clears throat> what they had explained to me, um, and I think Jacob Bialik as well, what they had explained to me was they've got they've got local budgets, and so contracted work and different things that they could just use their contractors and their labor to do some of this stuff and it doesn't have to be a line item thing. Okay. So it's something that they could absorb locally. Um, but when we meet with them, we'll have to figure that out. And maybe they'll be more interested after the park is in place. Yeah, the improvements so should help. They might be, yeah. yeah, they might be more. Okay, and then um, I know you said we probably don't have that skitter yet, so the basketball court, are we not thinking this fall, or? Uh, it depends. If it comes in and we've got time, we'll, we'll hit it. If not, it might have to be spring, but. And have we dispersed how much of that grant already? I know you don't have the line items, but it, how much has actually been dispersed out? Um, I think the agenda item I brought before council was in the neighborhood of $125,000. Um, 15, 15 to 17,000 of that was the trash receptacles, which came out of a different, most of that came out of a different line item. So say 15,000 of that came out of a different, so. Um, and we've done some of the, we've done some of the work at the softball field, we installed the basketball hoop, so um, I, I don't know what the out of pocket is, but it's probably in the 120, 130 ish range. What was that total amount of that grant? I, I, I don't have that before me. What was it? 135. Was it 135 or was it 135? That's about right. I, I don't remember. Okay. Because there, if you remember, the city council had had budgeted 35,000 towards Morton Park to begin with. Maybe that's Plus, we've got a lot of. Um, force account work, you know, the work that my staff is doing, yeah. Okay, and now, are we still expected to come up with volunteers for the October 30th, and how many are we thinking? 
We don't have a lot of volunteers, so. Yeah. So what? What? Um, what Sinclair Recreation suggested was on Monday, um, volunteers that are more mechanically inclined can turn wrenches and help us do assembly and installation. Um, but he said anybody that shows up, they'll find stuff for them to do. Um, and then on Tuesday will be um, um, some additional installation, but then installing the, the borders around the playground equipment and then lots of engineered wood fiber. So okay. wheel bearing that wheel bearing that stuff around. Um, what do we think of 10? So you really didn't say there was yes. a minimum amount because I'm going to have that we we're, we're going to have staff there that'll uh, assist and do as much as we can. And then um, whatever volunteer work is there just makes it that much easier and more fun. So this is just for Martin? Morton and Duffy. So it was Monday for Martin and Tuesday for Duffy or both? We're going to do both oh, on. Oh. Yeah. So there's. Like there's layout to do, there's sorting out like all the hardware that I talked about, there's assembly. Um, we will, my staff will auger the holes, like the pole that the poles go in. Um, we're gonna set all those poles, um, set the base for the, the two uh, worlds or merry grounds mm -hmm. um, and just get as much stuff as done as we can. And then in the afternoon, we're gonna, we'll have a concrete truck ordered and we'll pour all the bases at both parks so we may okay. split up or may move from one to the other. Okay. Um, Rich is really, Rich Sinclair is really good about um, managing that stuff in the groups. Okay, good. So he'll take the lead on that. So we need 9 a.m. start time, or is that what we're thinking? Nine. We should start getting, uh, we'll only have one more meeting prior to that. I, so. I've got a whole sheet okay. of all that stuff. I can send that out to you. Okay. Please, yeah. We yeah. should start working on that a little bit. I got some you. People. I can get some people for more. Well, I'm going to try both. But. Jeff, do you think all, I've never built a playground before, but can all of that be done in a two-day period? That seems like two parks in two days is. Yeah, because there's, there's. They didn't do the two in one okay. day, or, yeah. There's, uh, there's two structures at Morton. There's the sensory dome. And then the merry-go-round, and then we want to set the um, the just the legs <coughs> for the uh, shade structure, and then at um, Duffy Park we've got a shade structure, and we've got a merry-go-round. So, yeah, and then you know benches stuff like that. We'll have be able to assemble that stuff. Um, a lot of the, or I should say, like the picnic tables need some assembly. But you know, a couple people can work on that, and um, the benches themselves, we will auger the holes in because I kind of want the structures to be set and us to all get a feel of spatially where everything is at, and then you guys can say, okay, we got three benches, let's put one here, let's put one here, let's put one there, move the shade structure over. Um, you know, if we've got time, I'd I'd love to set the grill. Um, we're going to be ready to do as much as we can and what we don't get accomplished in those two days, my staff will finish up that week. So, yeah. um, the only thing that'll take a little bit longer is the shade structures, um, all the playground equipment, when the concrete sits overnight, we can install everything on top of it. No problem. But the shade structures, um, those are a little bit more structural, so they don't want the actual, uh, fabric installed for two weeks afterwards which mm -hmm. isn't a big deal. Sounds good. We'll move forward. Anything on the amphitheater? Any update, Karen? No. Nope. Okay. I haven't heard anything since we met with the consultant. Right. Okay. Yeah. It's still within. Yeah, it's still yeah, it's study. Study. three months. The Marina Project Open House? Yeah, I think we read it. Yeah. Just try to come if you can. Jeff, anything you want to add on that? Just that, um, you know, the Harbor Commission, I think the staff there, the boaters have been very receptive to all the improvements and uh, the building, the grounds, just everything. Um, I think the Marina had a very good year and the Harbor Commission kind of wants to celebrate that. And honestly, the public doesn't really get to see inside that building because it's it's keyed and coded for the boaters. So. They could just they just want to casual open up the doors and have people come in and check out you know what a nice facility we've got. Mm -hmm. Secretly, we're kind of hoping that 
we get some local boaters to come check it out and we can translate that into some additional seasonals uh, which helps financially stabilize that that business but you've already got what two two or f two three more of seasonals seasonals for next year probably ten more ten more mm -hmm. I mean that are interested that want we've already got more seasonals this year or then you've Both heard about years, next yeah. season than we do for this year so oh, really? that's on a good trend yeah. Yeah. Very well. that was a good project and Kelly you did an excellent job on that it was a good collaboration the marina is in a park so it, the parks commission and the harbor commission worked very uh, well together on that so it was a good good project so okay um, let's see <clears throat> Anything on park improvements plans? Uh, yes, I finally took a serious look at the uh, Manatee County Parks uh, study that was done in 2022. And it's so tiny, it's hard to read. But I took a picture of it, put it fooled around, and, and I've got it on one sheet, and you can actually read it. So I'll pass it out to everyone. And uh, consistent with the uh, prior comments this evening. It's interesting to note the things that the Park Commission has accomplished uh, since the study was done. And uh, what I would like to see the rest of the people on the commission do, I'm a new person obviously, and so all of this is new. What I'd like to do is to pass this out, you can take it home, take a look at it, and let's start thinking about some priorities that we might recommend uh, once we see this, it's much more detailed than I initially thought. I was pretty dismissive when I couldn't read it. <laughs> so, but it's it's quite interesting. So that would be a great start for us to really um, set out some priorities. The one thing it didn't include was pickleball courts. <laughs> are needed. Are, Which are needed. Yeah. Well, and at that time was still fairly new, probably yeah. uh, as far as the concept. So living document you know is things and, yeah and then add things to it i mean this includes things like uh batting cages benches bike lanes bike rack uh this golf is listed on there uh, fencing fish cleanings you know uh, restrooms all kinds of detail there that we can we can use so that's it dr veach if i can give just a little bit of background on the origin of that um the city of Manistee has routinely done a five-year parks plan. And that parks plan gets obviously approved by the Parks Commission, City Council. Then that gets put on file with the state of Michigan and it makes us eligible for DNR grants. Um, shoot, this must have been six, seven years ago. The county decided that every community because not everybody does that. We consistently have done that, the city has, but the county put together a group where they went to every um, government body in the, in the county and took everybody through an exercise that created not just that spreadsheet, but the whole document. And the goal was to have every municipality in the county have a consistent park plan to recognize that what we have, what they have, each other, and then look for opportunities and collaboration. Um, and so we are the only county in the state of Michigan that has done that as a county submittal. So when that five-year plan expired, every plan in the county expired, and it took another year before that the full county could get it renewed. So we missed a funding opportunity, or at least an opportunity to apply for a grant for the North Riverwalk because we didn't have it in place at the deadline. So the Parks Commission did go through what is there, but I agree with you guys, it's a living document, it's changing every improvement you do, every opportunity that comes forward, it, you know, you need to keep, keep that updated. And, <clears throat> and I think if you continue to do that, it puts us in a position where when the next renewal comes up, you know, you've got it and don't have to do a lot of special uh, uh, legwork to to present it. It's interesting to see the recommendations to the other townships in that. For example, uh, in Onekwa, it was recommending uh, property acquisition mm -hmm. committee, things like that. And so 
The next item is art drop, and um, this was just brought up at the last meeting, and it's just brought up as an idea. I don't know if it was Karen, one of the Karens, yeah. both Karens, but Karen Patola might have brought the idea up, but Karen Mao, they both got together and took it, and that was an impressive thing because it happened, like in uh, two weeks, you know? It wasn't like we talked about it and we brought it up week after week. It, they talked about it and it happened, and I want to sidetrack for one moment too. There was kind of an art drop in that marina. And so if you go to the open house, notice that Eileen Postma, who's a, a commercial graphic artist that's very professional, and she is a professional, she didn't, she loaned us those prints in there, but she paid to have them matted and to have them framed. I know she has $1,000 and chose the frame specifically so that they would look good in our marina and they're on loan. She just wanted to just do that. And I thought just if you get a chance, personally thank Eileen and if you got extra money, she'd really like if you bought a print, I'm sure. So yeah, they're, they're phenomenal and it's such a, a, a plus to that marina. So that was an art drop in a park. Mm -hmm. But now the other art drop in the park, go ahead, you two tell us about it. Well, <laughs> the three Karens, yeah, <laughs> is what I call us. And, I'm sorry, the two Karens and the Kelly, the K's cubed, I call this. But yeah, <laughs> we uh, put together that art draft. And when we talked to Kelly, I didn't realize her son was an artist. And here I'm thinking, where am I going to get this artwork from? And I asked if Evan would be so nice to donate it, and he was. And so now we have our piece of artwork, right? But now I was saying, where do we go from here? So it was kind of interesting the way we all got together. I met with Jeff in his office and uh, we talked about some things he likes to, uh, he knows uh, how to do scavenger hunts and we needed a little <laughs> help with that. And then we got the gamer here, who I call the gamer, Karen with an eye. She uh, came up with all the clues. Uh, and they were she, great uh, clues. It was fun, yes. Yeah. And uh, then she, and, it was, <laughs> and then we were gonna hide the artwork. Remember, we were talking about this, and then we said, no, we can't hide it. It might get damaged, right? So then we said, okay, what do we do now? So now we hide a token. And so I go, what does that look like, right? She came up with a token idea. She goes, well, I got this piece of birch. So I took it and I wrote on it and drew on it, right? You know, because I said, who else is gonna copy this? It can't be copied. <laughs> She goes, I got this pink envelope. I said, perfect. That's what we're going to hide it in, you know, because it was uh, one of those uh, bubble wrap with, uh, you know, so it was good against the elements again. And I did hide it, and somebody did find it, but the uh, owner of the token has not brought it in yet to turn in for the artwork. So I'm going to call uh, Miss McCall tomorrow and find out. Do you think that person's out of town? Or? I, I talked to Kelly the, earlier this week, and... Um she said the person that found it mm -hmm. had called and said, I got it, right. I found it, but I work during the day and I'll, I gotta find a way till I have a day off or something to come in. So Kelly was re gonna reach back out to her and see if she could set up a, a exchange on the side or after hours or something. Cool. Okay. But Kelly said she would get, she was, she was in the parks in the dark before the clue would come out. They were looking every day. Really? And then all of a sudden the clue would come out, and I think it was her husband or her friend would call each other, the clue came out. Oh, and then they would wow. redeploy and refocus, <laughs> and, and it sounds like people were having a blast with it. Yeah. Oh. yeah. So, Good. Good. I mean, it was fun putting together with you yeah. guys. Yeah. It was pretty easy to do, and I wow. think we should do it again. I, I think. I agree. I think it's cool. Yeah, that was fun. I, I hope the people that participated in it thought it was fun. Um, we had to take a pink, pinky promise, uh, sometimes virtually, <laughs> once we knew where we were hiding it. <laughs> but that's interesting. I was wondering how they would have found that, because yeah. that man, they were right on that. And, and yeah. with only three clues. I mean, the clues were only going to get better. From, did I show you guys the rest of the clues? Yeah, the they were only the better from then on. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of sad. We More save them for next year, because, okay. yeah, I think we should keep the Same committee. Oh. And Karen, your name should have been on that committee. I thought it was on the draft. Um, okay. But let's 
if you want to, let's continue this because it's a national thing. Yeah. And I, you know, I thought I thought it went well. Had see if we could get right get the already had get it ahead. Yeah, I can't. Don't put it together, together in two weeks. Times you did. I don't think. Oh, we listen, I could have done it. Listen, we had a nice um, flow of energy going. That's you know, how we did it. In, you know, I don't know. And really is. I think you could do it even seasonally, like four times a year or something. About that. How about do a fall, spring, spring a summer, winter. Be a fun time. Yeah, winter might be fun for that. That's what actually. You think? You'd have to cover up your tracks. Well, you know, <laughs> you should have seen me. You, that's a good point. You should have seen me. Well, I, <laughs> ahead, I saw, so I saw people. I, it was on one of the discussion sites, um, but there was a whole exchange of people that talked about looking for it, and oh, nice. they thought they were close, and Good. several Good people call. said, I thought it was underneath the bridge, but there were spider webs, and it creeped me out, and, <laughs> and somebody went and said, man, I went there that afternoon, and all I saw was the piece of tape left, yeah, and so okay. a lot of people seemed to enjoy that. Good, good, I'm yeah. glad, yeah, because it was hard to get feedback about, you know? Yeah, the, the only so negative thing you. is... Yeah. We were hoping that somebody would claim it, come to City Hall, get their picture taken, <laughs> their picture then, taken then you and officially stop the clues yeah. because we, we heard it was found, but we didn't do the clues oh. keep going. Right. And right. So yeah. we, there was no like, finality to it. But well, That's okay. We'll but there needs to be yeah. when, when it's claimed. Yeah, when, when it gets claimed. Let's get a picture in the paper if we can. So we'll call Kelly tomorrow, see if that person would be willing and put a picture in, and kind of... Already had that conversation with okay, Kelly. Okay, perfect. Yes, and she, okay. She was, she yeah, was, and just she tell a little bit... Uh, yeah. Instructed to do it. <laughs> and I'm leaving, so Karen's going to do it. Perfect. So. Or I'll, I was going to do it, so... Good. Yeah. So thank, thank you, it was Karen. Fun. I appreciate that. For all the work. I know, right? You guys did an awesome and job. And can I thank just you. say, Kelly McCall was key in all this too. Oh because man, she was she awesome. She was amazing. Yeah. City manager's office. She would do all of our postings for yes. us. I mean, yes. She thank was you, right Kelly on top McCall. of everything yes. the whole time. Thank you. So. Yeah. So there's another mm -hmm. K. So yeah, she was. She was <laughs> really involved in this too, and Good. still is. She still is. Yeah, went through her. Okay, kickball. Anything on that? Oh man, I went and saw that last night. That looked like fun. <laughs> they have four teams, um, so that's not bad for a first time, you know, for something new. I don't think in a town of 6,500, I think that's great. I hear, I still hear a buzz about it. You know, people are mm -hmm. still talking about it. I think because it's new, I think we need to get a little. But there are four teams that are playing on Wednesdays. It's a six-week um, schedule. Um, I saw last night, who did I see? The um, kid from the comic um, oh, yeah. backstage, I think it was, backstage against the team from the correctional, Oaks Correctional. Oaks won, I saw the post. <laughs> they were pretty proud. <laughs> they were pretty good. Yeah. Well, you know what, yeah. The, they were, <laughs> anyways, I didn't see the other two teams, so. So the, the MRA reached out to us and we, we made, it, made them a key so they can get into the shed and use the lights oh, for you. these as yes, well. Oh, thank you, because yeah. him and I went and looked yesterday and I said, I don't know where they are. Okay. It's inside, yeah. Okay, but it looked like a lot of fun. So we do have to think about getting our team together. So I, I, in fact, I challenged all commissions to get a, uh, and council, <laughs> to get a team for next season. <laughs> Maybe we could have one joint team yeah. collaborate with all the commissions. There you go. So, Anyways, it looks like fun. There's no trophies. It's a social. Oh, they have a social hour, too. And the, la the last night, it was Third Coast. No, not Third Coast. What's the name of it? Um, Third Life. Was, thank you. Third Life Brewery offered after the games, anybody in their jersey from, the, you know, from kickball, um, half off their first drink. So every week there's going to be another, hopefully, social hour from another establishment offering something. Um, I'm, I'm going to suggest that they go to the chocolate house too for uh, maybe they'll give a piece of candy or something. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. So if you, you know. Okay. Anyway, Thank you. that was good. And it was, a, you know, we have a new recreation director and Eric. Yes. Oh, no, Eric's real, real. He's going to be yes. on Ho, and I think that we'll have lots of opportunities to collaborate with them. And yeah. I think. That's what we want is more recreation in the yeah. parks. Oh, and nice. it's free, yeah. basically, except for the t-shirts. But it's free, free. So free fun. Yeah, they're awesome. Thank you to the MRA, too. They're awesome. I think we covered the grants pretty much already. Oh, we forgot the tree commission. Oh, the tree commission I added. Yes. Give us the report on that. All right. <laughs> added addendum. Um, so last time we met, I think I mentioned the idea of planting trees in Morton Park along that old fence in between Morton's and basically the basketball court that borders the road. It's um, 
kind of a stark transition between the park and then industrial space beyond. So I thought if we could just add some trees and kind of soften that up a bit, it would feel more parkish. Mm -hmm. um, can I show you some, a picture or two? Yes. Is that okay? Yeah. I brought yeah. Some? Okay. Katie, is that okay? Mm -hmm. We even got a presentation. I like it. Well, <laughs> the perspective she provides really opens your eyes to the first two. The oh, it really does. Right. Yeah. Okay, cool. Do you nice. have well, no, I have the other presentation. <laughs> Just give me a second. <laughs> okay. But um, basically, I um, I went over to Morton's and I took about, like Liz said, about 16 pictures, trying to get the feel of what the park felt like from the inside, and. Um, it's pretty telling, like Jeff said um, at the Tree Commission meeting, uh, that he didn't, never really saw, I think, that perspective of how you really view the industrial space when you're in the basketball courts and inside. It's, it could be more nature-y and park-like, and um, part of the vocal point, I think, should be that kind of slide. And um, I also contrasted it with the art park down. Have you been to the art park? I know you guys have been to the art yes. park. Yes. Yes. Legacy and, art park. Uh, the one on River Street, the one that's privately oh, the little, owned, yeah, mm -hmm, the yeah. little one, they yeah. also have a yes. chain link fence, but what they've done is add some uh, tall green giant thujas and some grassy yes. big bushes, and you barely even notice the transition there is right up against an alley and cars are parked there, but you don't notice because there's just a few artfully placed trees and bushes that kind of dry your eye there instead, and it feels very nature, I have a better word than nature-y. <laughs> just more natural. More natural, Less thank you. industrial. Yes. So if park -like, you look, more park -like. if you look at the first two first, I went back mm -hmm. and um, I noticed that the fence looked pretty rusty and brown, so I didn't know if that was a trick of the photo, so I went back and took another look and it, it is so rusty and brown. It when the light hits it a certain way you don't notice, but light hits it a different way and it's it's totally brown. And I wonder, Jeff, if is that something in um, away from trees for a second that we could paint? Do we have silver paint that could be? I've seen I've seen fence painted painted before, but it it helps immediately and doesn't last very long no. because. So if you look at the it, second picture. Too, yeah, if you know anything about painting, like ninety percent of your success is prepping it, and you can't prep that. No, you can't. It's really it's quite awful when you when you take a good look at it. But can it be replaced? Is that? A pricey thing to it can, do. It's pricey, but you can replace it, yeah. But it's, I thought, how sad that we're doing this, you know, all these additions, but we have a, um, a rusty old fence bordering the road and uh, Morton's on that well, side. Could but, it be sprayed? If you cover one yeah. side, spray the one side? Uh, but that's it, the it, fence. They it. Right along the uh, side of the road there on 3rd Street yeah. by Morton's. And if you look at the one, um, Katie Wright standing in the basketball court, I think it's number five. Oh. <coughs> it's that one. Is the view you get when you're playing basketball over there, and it's it's just a little of a stark, harsh transition. But if you can soften that transition, I think it would be a good addition. If and and we went to the tree commission on Monday and talked to them about it, and they agreed with us and even thought about um, extending a tree line down Ramsdale Street. <coughs> would be a good idea to add some life to that neighborhood as well, um, kind of taking the Morton Park project a little farther. But they did give us two really good ideas which won't cost us anything, and that is um, the Country Club is supposed to be giving away or, or tearing out some of the very bushes that, Katie, if you go down and show the art park um, photo of the, there's one with the big bushes off to the, by the shade yeah, the structure. One. Oh, there are one. Uh, one more down. Do you see it? <laughs> so you don't have deer downtown? These here? Yeah. The big <laughs> fluffy grassy things? The them. country club is getting rid of apparently three? Three of them. And they, I made the contact, but they haven't. Um, we talked to Zach, and he's going to check with whoever is the one that makes that decision. Right, oh, to nice. see if we can have them instead of them just throwing them away. They're just throw them away. Oh, how nice. That we could transplant along the fence line. And yeah, then, and if, well, if they're mature like that, you can probably at quarter them and get four plants out of them. Say, yeah. And they come right but back. They're beautiful. And um, also, Very nice. Jerry Haw on the commission. Jerry Haw has a whole row of them. He lives on Cedar Street, and they mm. line his driveway, and they're gorgeous. I admire them every day I drive by. He said we could cut each of them in half. Next spring. Next spring. 
So and take them and transplant them to Morton Park as well. So oh, I didn't so count how many there were. were a lot. There's probably 12. He's got a ton. They're beautiful. Are those arbor Oh, very good. Are they? Those, no, tall the, are. The, those tall ones the are. Those tall ones over there. The ones on the left, John. The brass oh, 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 Just those yeah. green yeah. things. All right. The pom yeah, pom bushes. Those tall ones, uh, those would be great too. But Well, the dairy tolls. I mean, is that something that we could... No deer down to okay. <laughs> if somebody's willing to donate it? Yeah, I know that. I mean, look at the trees in this picture. But yeah, it's, it's a gorgeous park. That's the park downtown. And then go look, go back to Morton's and just compare the two, just take any one of Morton's. Not these bushy ones here. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right. Apparently the deer don't need using shade. Yeah. <laughs> using uh, just what a difference. And we have two trees, but we need more trees. And the commission is interested in collaborating, and they would write a grant. And they realized when they did the overlay, and Jeff, you had those overlays, that that whole neighborhood is lacking a little bit in trees. So um, they're interested in improving that. So. Right. And they did say they want to fundraise with us to try to try to gain money for trees in that area as well if we were interested. Okay. And they went over, there are quite a few grants out there, hopefully, that are specifically to improve the greenery of an area. And this area would probably really qualify because it's needed. It's an area that would call. Thank you. Thank you. That was, so thanks, Karen. That would be a great improvement. And, and if, can't, if the paint isn't going to hold on the fence, then cover the fence. So it could work. Right. OK. That's all I have. Okay, well, we'll follow through on that and just keep going. The trees. And yeah, the with the trees area. in that area. So. Very nice. Okay, let's see, where are we now? Thanks Can I, grants. Uh, under grants, I, yes. we did cover the one that you've got listed, but there's uh, several other ones. Um, we have a Spicer Group fully engaged right now with the ADA Riverwalk grant um, for the south side. Cool. Um, we should be, receive our scoring in the next uh, 60 days for the North Riverwalk grant through the uh, DNR. Um, the disc golf course is completed, and so I'm working on closing out that grant. And then I've talked to the uh, Community Foundation about their mini grant um, to purchase a basketball hoop for Fifth Avenue. And so um, Sarah suggested let's close out the disc golf and then we can process that. There's no deadline, so it's just whenever we can get it submitted. Um, and then the um, city manager wanted me to relay that we have received from MEDC a two-part grant to fund our beach master plans. Um, we had applied for some grants a couple years ago and did not receive those. But because Manistee is a um, uh, ready, what's the term? Uh, redevelopment ready community, um, we qualify for um, some planning grants through MEDC. And so they, they're splitting the grant between their current fiscal year and the next fiscal year, but it should fully fund. And um, so the city manager is going to be assembling like a steering committee to um, meet with the consultant and um, and then kind of determine what public involvement we want. And so um, he had asked me uh, to let you know that he would like to have a member of the Parks Commission on that steering committee. And it doesn't have to be decided tonight, but you know, within the next month. The other thing on that um, South River Walk one, we went to the initial walk through when they were bidding on it and stuff. And then um, we haven't heard too much after that. Who all went? You went, Kelly, in. Excuse me. Yeah. We never heard too much after that. And there was part of it that had to be started by September. Wasn't that correct? Or well, I, uh, I've updated you yes. the last couple months on this. But we hired, um, we hired a consultant. Um, that consultant started doing, started getting some of the, the data gathering and normal stuff. They, before they got it really into any meaningful uh, design work, they started focusing on some structural issues that we are already aware of and already planned for. And then we're requesting change orders and we're focusing on non things that weren't in the scope of work. And so the city got pretty um, 
we got pretty frustrated and disappointed and finally terminated that engineering contract. So um, we now have a contract with Spicer. Um, Spicer helped prepare the, um, the preliminary engineering report that is required for a federal grant. And because they worked on that, so that on that PER, they are not eligible for any federal funds under this grant. So essentially, the money that we had allocated in the grant to pay for engineering is now going to go towards more improvements and construction, and then council has agreed to use fund balance to pay for the engineering portion of it. So the the project's been delayed. The EDA has agreed to a modified schedule. Um, the expectation is that work will begin in this construction work will begin in the spring and be completed by I believe next next December. Um, so they have the, met the requirements of something being started in September, right? I just remember that was such a big deal. Yeah, okay. September 5th, there was, we were required to start construction, but that's been revised and approved by the EDA. Okay, perfect. Okay, so that's basically it on the Riverwalk. Um, under new business, we've got Sammy here from the CBB. Uh, does an amazing job and has uh, been a promoter of the parks. Yes. So, <laughs> say your last yeah. name too, Sarah. Lucas. <laughs> Lucas Shevitz. It's right? Lucas Skevitz. Okay, Skevitz. Huh. So I I've been in uh, at the Manistee County. I was at the I've been at the Visitors Bureau for about a year, and I apologize that this is the first time that I'm meeting many of you. A couple of you I've met and seen along the way. <coughs> And as we start promoting um, our new brand, and I'm gonna walk through that, I, I thought it would be very easy for me to just drop off this stuff and say, this is what we're gonna do, and this is what we're looking at moving forward. But I realized that I hadn't really walked through who I am or also what the Visitors Bureau, which is now the Manistee County Tourism Authority does on a day-to-day -day basis. And we have a little bit of a, a mission change, but Part of our uh, mission is to work closely with the county groups and the Parks Commission, certainly in the city, is one of those. Um, and I don't like to be too formal, but because this is the first time I'm meeting you, I figured I'd try to set a really nice impression. Um, but if you have questions, feel free to ask those along the way. And I'll try to go fast because I don't want to keep everybody too long. Um, but I did want to give just a little presentation on where we are at the Visitors Bureau um, and what's to come. Uh, Katie, how do I make this full screen? Oh, is she? Oh, there we go. Thank what you. And then I think I can just use this to scroll oh, okay. through the slides. Thank you. Just mm -hmm. the little roller or just yeah, the clicker? Yeah, I think you just, okay. just roll through All right. Okay, well, um, so you might have noticed as the Manistee County Convention and Visitors Bureau in the past, we still operate under that name, uh, but we now have an assumed name with the state, and that's the Manistee County Tourism Authority. And, you know, as I came on board, I realized that we were doing a little bit more than just being a Visitors Bureau. I mean, we're engaged in economic development discussions, housing discussions, uh, placemaking, destination marketing, and things like that. So. We're more than just picking up brochures and placing billboards to come visit this community. We're gonna still do that, but there's some other things that we're working on as well. But I also realize that we're not a single entity that operates individually. We're somebody who needs to work with other people so we can all lift up this entire county uh, for the betterment, not only for the visitors who come here, but for the locals. and. I've had some people say to me, well, you know, you're just talking to visitors. Our locals are our most important constituents because they're the ones that set the tone here. And I was on the street and a lady's like, oh, are you a local? And I'm like, well, yes, I am. And so they started asking me about places to go and things to see. And I said to him jokingly, you asked the right person. But I can't imagine that I'm alone and someone asking Where's a good beach to go to? What's a good park? We'd like to play pickleball. So our locals are really important too. It's not just about us talking to visitors. 
So because we are uh, embarking on a new um, role, we thought we needed a better logo. Um, you know, those are kind of the logos that have been seen through the Visitors Bureau, the city and the county over the last several years. And our little peach and black logo up in the top, the Visit Manistee County, Michigan, wasn't really a mark. It was something that was put on a report, I'm told, uh, many years ago, and then we just kind of picked it up. And that's really not a way to unroll, a, uh, reveal a brand. You really have to feel uh, a, something when you look at somebody's logo. So this, these are our new marks. Um, the Manistee, which I love, the wave line uh, moves through it, representing uh, the entire county's connection between woods and water, while also uh, being representative of a pathway or a shoreline, a trail. It can be a wave, it could be a fishing line. Uh, the other day it was my golf putt. So it can really be anything that uh, brings woods and water together um, harmoniously. And also the colors are a little bit nicer. I know this isn't a, the best scene for it, but it's really a, a lovely green and turquoise color. And then once you have a logo, you know, it means nothing if you don't have a mission and purpose. And ours really is about marketing, education, and collaboration. And so while our job is to promote Manistee County to visitors, we also promote to locals. I mean, I feel like it's nice to be able to bring uh, a new attitude to Manistee uh, for people to recognize that they're important in tourism, the people who live here. And we also want not only visitors, but locals to explore nature, history, community, the culture that's throughout our region. And I've lived here full time since December of 2019, but I bought a house here in 2015. And I had no idea about some of the great things that there are to do in Manistee County until I got this job. And it's nice to be a tourist in my community. Um, I was out and about today doing some color tours. I turned my hand blue in Bear Lake at the car wash because I drove out to Ironfish and hit some of the dirt roads to do a fall color tour. So it's nice to be able to experience the county and many times as for the first time and I want everybody to be able to do that. And I wanna make sure that when we're uh, posting an ad or have a billboard or a television spot that people are intrigued enough about it to discover this community and feel that they have a connection here that's also real and authentic because uh, certainly the people of Manistee are very real and we had a photographer that was here all last week taking or two weeks ago taking photos throughout the county and he said to me, the local stoke is real over Manistee and everybody was so helpful and we used real people from Manistee as our models and it was just super fun. I'm gonna show you some of the photos today too. These are a couple of our uh, new ads that we'll be placing and you'll see the new photos. These are real Manistee people doing Manistee things. We got some beautiful aerials of downtown, uh, the Big M, we went to, out to Arcadia, we did some golfing. It really is, some of the photos are so awesome that it makes the hair on my arm stand up. Mm -hmm. um, so Old Baldy Trail there as well. And um, with the new brand, we also uh, will be getting a new website. Uh, you, you'll see changes to our website now. We've simply updated the colors. Um, and the, some of the, the color schemes and some of the buttons, but we'll be getting a new website here shortly. The next part of what we do is education, and we receive a lot of data from MEDC um, and also from some of the technology sources that we've engaged with as vendors to help provide some data. What is the economic impact of tourism here? Um, you know, how many visitors did we see uh, throughout, the, throughout the year and how much are they spending while they're here? The other thing that we're doing, which is kind of sexy and cool, is we work with a company called NEAR where we've geofenced our entire county. So we look at the visitation of people who come in and out of the county. So if they spend four hours or more within the city or within the county lines and they're not from inside Manistee County, then we know about them. So it gives us accurate data of 
when we start placing advertising where our money is best spent. So, um, you know, we're seeing an increase in people in Chicago, so we're increasing our advertising in Chicago, mm -hmm. trying to bring more Chicagoans here. Um, also, it helps us look at, I've, I've provided some data for to the chamber on where did people come from for the Budweiser Clydesdales or the Sleigh Bell Committee on where are people coming for Sleigh Bell? Um, how long are they spending while they're downtown? So little things like that we can look at and then provide that data back. Um, AirDNA is another partner that we have that looks at short-term rental um, companies around the area. So, And then the last thing is collaboration. Um, it really means nothing to have all this information and this opportunity without working with others. And I'm committed to making sure that the Tourism Authority helps partner with people uh, to do that. There's a saying that I always uh, heard growing up, and it's people support what they help build. And I promise that we'll do our part to help build uh, Manistee County and promote what's in the communities in each of Manistee County's um, cities. Because Manistee is a really big place, and we recognize that we also need to work with Bear, Lair, Bear, Bear Lake, Brethren, Wellston, Filer, all the communities to showcase their strengths and all their assets as well. And we're looking at putting kiosks regionally <coughs> throughout the community to uh, better serve guests. I mean, there are some people who visit Onekama who don't want to come to Manistee. So let's give them some tourism information about Onekama or some information about Manistee as well. So they might want to come here or they might want to visit Bear Lake or go to Wellston. So my itinerary is our new uh, community kiosk information. We have typically done the visitor guides, and I love our visitor guide. I don't know if you've seen our fall color guide, but it is spectacular. Mm -hmm. When you open it up, it's not just a promotion of the businesses that are here. It's really a promotion of the assets within Manistee. And so you open it up and you see two color routes wow. mm -hmm. to, um, and some neat little sites along the way. Um, and I haven't seen other CVBs, certainly ones of our size, do something like this. So this is really special. Mm -hmm. But this is also one way of talking to people. And so whether you're 30 years old or 80, you're getting the same piece of information that everybody's getting. With my itinerary, we're able to let people build their own adventures. And I put two draft cards in front of you. These are not to scale. This is how big they'll be, so you'll be able to read them. But um, we are planning on uh, doing a series of pick your adventures, individual cards of things that you want to do based on what your interests are, based on what your skill level is, and then also based on what your time commitment is. Because some people, if they come to Manistee and they only have an hour, we can't give them a six hour thing to do. So we, we're going to let people pick their own kind of adventure when, to enjoy our community. Our first kiosk is already at West Shore Community College. Our second one will be at the airport. Uh, we're making some measurements. We'll probably have four by the end of this year. The inside West Shore, is it inside? Yes, it's in the vestibule okay. at Maple and River. Um, it's, that one is just temporary till we get all of our, our Pick Your Adventure cards there. Um, but we'll have, for, to start, we'll roll out 30 different adventures. And two of those ventures, adventures are um, First Street Beach and Fifth Avenue Beach because that's those are important components to this community and we'll have other things like the Big M and Arcadia Dunes sure and Manistee River Trail but I'd say that one of the biggest calls that we get at the Visitors Bureau is which beach should I go to so our beaches are unique and they're different for what your experience is and we want to be able to showcase that to people um, if you want to be able to play disc golf, if you want to play pickleball, if you want to get food and be able to rent something, then you need to know which beach you need to go to. So um, I imagine that we'll have more than just the two beaches, um, just listening about the disc golf. I know we've reflected it on here, but disc golf is, is much bigger. We've got a lot throughout the entire county, so there's probably going to be a section on our website about disc golf. Um, but being able to promote the work that you guys have put into making our parks spectacular helps us. So thank you for that. 
And see, now I've gotten off track and I'm like lost on my notes. But um, um, so yeah, the initial rollout will, I'm in the proofing stage of all of our 30 adventures. Um, I'm especially proud of, of the two beaches because they are a little bit different. Um, I live over by Fifth Ave Beach, so I'm kind of partial to that one. Um, but over the next um, 12 months, we'll continue to work with local events. Um, I don't know if y'all know this because you work very closely with Jeff, but he stores our barricades for us and we loan those out to community groups that are interested in free barricades, whether they need a liquor license or they just want to flow traffic flow and Jeff stores those and his team helps with that. And then we also have the county line markers that are going around. Those will be rebranded soon. Um, we've already consolidated some of our social media. We have brand new photography. Um, we're working still on the regional kiosk, so there's a lot of things that we're uh, working on. And of course, our new updated vacation guides and my itinerary cards. And, you know, I, I was kind of looking around to try to prepare for this. And this has been nice to be able to sit here and listen because all, I think all of you are very thoughtful with everything that you're doing with the parks. and. I read a piece on destination development that said that parks are often the engine that drives tourism. And I gauge it this way, because tourists see things and they look at the way parks are cared for and maintained. That's going to be a reflection of their experience is how well our parks look, um, <coughs> if, you know, if they're updated, if they're fun, and seeing people play means a happy community. And that helps me sell that outside of Manistee. So thank you for all the work that you, you do. And um, I'll try to come to more meetings. <laughs> I'm sorry it took me so long to get here the first time around, so. Well, thank you for all you're doing. Yes. Thank, thank you, I appreciate you. that. Part. Yeah. I have a really good team, and so. For, so do we, so we look forward to working with you. and. Your community is definitely judged by its parks. They don't know the financial statements when they visit here. They don't know the quality of the water, but they or your drinking water, but they do know the quality of your parks. They do. So, yeah. So thank you. You're thank welcome. you, and for the promotional material and everything. It's we're, my pleasure. Yeah. You said you wanted to see people enjoying outdoor recreation, so we're going to help with that. Yes, more people in the parks and more. So any <laughs> suggestions right. you have, we welcome you back. <clears throat> yes, so. please. Okay. Thank yeah. you very much. So thank you, Sammy. Thank you, Sammy. Appreciate it. Except for kickball, I may not do that. Oh, well, <laughs> well, well, bring I thought we had a ringer. <laughs> I know. Okay. We'll get you. <laughs> Good. Um, then we have from the rec center at Sands Park, Linda, you and Jim. And Jim's going to talk. I just want to say while he's coming up, I uh, wanted to get the, the new name for that is the rec at Sands Park. I wanted to get it right, so I just stopped in one day after school and. It was impressive. It is clean. I walked in about 3.30, I was just driving past, I thought I could get this name right, and Sheila and Linda is the director, and Sheila is the hands-on two person there. They had cookies set out, like two big trays of cookies, a gallon of milk, and cups. And I thought it was a homey place for kids to come after school. I was impressed. It was clean and neat. There's kids playing games. There's kids outside. There was activity, and it was an asset to the community. And how many cookies did you eat? Wow, <laughs> <laughs> they were great looking cookies. They were <laughs> okay, Jim Grabowski, 1235 Cornell, council member. Uh, talking about, now you brought up about the teen center. Uh, Jeff, who handles the repairs up at the teen center? Um, the city, the city and the school are supposed to split them, but the school handle or the city handles all of the repairs. Okay, who's going to repair the pipe that's leaking that's not connected in the bathroom? Kitchen. The kitchen, the kitchen. Kitchen. And the thing needs to be painted. I bought that cabinet so they could get all the winter stuff out and put in outside in, in that. And, and uh, I think it needs a painting job. Uh, I've been in there. The ceiling tile is broken out. Uh, I think we need a lot of work then up there. I've asked uh, uh, Linda to get us a list of what needs to be done up there. Uh, I think they need to increase the budget for them. Uh, they've been at 13000 for years. In fact, one year they wanted to reduce it. And so we've left it at that, but they need to increase this. Because, it, I mean, I'm glad to see them there for those kids that don't can't find a place to go home for a while. So. 
we need to get this stuff done. And I, so if we can get the list, I'll give it to Jeff, give it to you guys. Are now are you just in collaboration with the with the teen center, or are you interested in it that much, or what? We're really interested in it because it is located within the park, right? And it is used to service the ice skating in the park. Correct me if I'm wrong. I mean, and I think it's that the buildings and should be an asset. We should possibly use it for more. And it's one of the only heated buildings that's you know in the winter with restrooms. Yeah. But the other parks, the restrooms closed down. So oh, I'd like to see more done for it. Uh, you know, we need to put some money into that place. So uh, that's one issue. Second issue I got is being we're talking about parks. If you notice the last few meetings for a while, I've been yelling about pickleball. I wanted to put it up at 8th Street where the tennis courts are. Uh, the manager would like to put it at 5th Avenue. Uh, we talked the other day about it and he's brought up about that. Well, we, maybe the pickleball would be too loud for the neighbors. They would like that. I don't know, we don't have a noise. We used to have at the police department a noise detector and they don't have that anymore. Do you have a chance to get a noise? I'd like to see what the volume of the, the uh, clack is going back and forth. I think that's important. So I'm going to go check with all the neighbors along that street, see if they mind it and all that. Uh, I know the city wants to get rid of them up there and put a sidewalk in and all that. I think that'd be an addition to, like Sammy said, uh, having something like that for visitors. I mean, it, it's become a national thing. Uh, New York is putting them in, in their old office buildings and every place. And you need 10 courts, I guess, from what... Uh, Pat told me that you need 10 courts to have tournaments, and Ludington just had a great big tournament down there, and all the little towns are putting them in around us in Manistee's without anything. I agree. So this is dumb that we're, and I've told this to the city council, we are dumb for not doing that and getting this done. And so I know Jeff talked about putting a volleyball court in. Uh, I think we need to keep that up there where it's at and, and quit fooling around and get this thing done. I don't know what it's going to cost, but I know Pat says they've already collected some money towards it and get us, get some grants or something, whatever we need to do, and build these things. We ain't going to get it done this year, but you know we could start in the spring. So I've just talked to the manager about it, and he keeps telling me about putting it at Fifth Avenue. I don't know if the wind down there or anything would make a difference, or if you have to put walls up, or you know the, those committees would know about that stuff. I don't know about it. But you know, I need some backup here, and, and, uh, and that'd be a big, big addition when visitors come in the nice to the park over there. I think we agree. Yeah, oh. I think we definitely want more things. I've been yelling at the city council meetings every meeting, so I hope we get somebody to, and uh, we're going to get a petition going and see if everything helps. Thank so. you. Yeah, we need them, and I'm I appreciate it. Beside where? Thank you. We definitely do need pickleball courts in the city. I agree. So, thank you. Lining the basketball courts at First Street Beach. Still trying to get that done, and I think Alyssa is planning on doing that. Uh, she's just got to get it done, get the time. And lining Fifth Avenue. I'm not sure. Tim was in charge of that, so not sure where we're coming on that. He sent on an email a week ago, a week and a half ago, that he's trying to work on price yeah a better price to have yes. his contractor do it yeah so hopefully that comes to fruition okay um, there is not a, a meeting for us in December we had talked about that last year about the month of December off okay. going around well I'm kind of overwhelmed by the <clears throat> presentation of, of the uh, new logo and all that, so the timing is right. Yeah, we yep. have some nice stuff Thank coming up here. One thing for Dr. Veach, um, I, did, were you able to tell him about where the aerials were? Oh, yeah. Yes. Are you, you yeah, good with that? Yeah, okay. Yeah, we can yeah, we can have more printed if you need them. No, no, that's fine. Okay. Can we have them made smaller, maybe? <laughs> that's it. <laughs> Those are so huge. Because I'd like to. Or do you have um, overlay paper? I have over. I have onion skin. Yeah, yeah. that's what I'm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, okay. 
Would that be something I could get my hands on a few sheet well to put in between each one? Yeah, I've got some yeah, in my we'll office. Take them to Jack if we can Thank do you. anything with, with them. I'll, I'll cover the cost of that. So the, yeah, I don't think you need to do that, but the, the, all of that came from our GIS system, okay? So we already have all that data. It's already, it already exists. And I just simply asked Spicer to plot them out at the commission's request so they so you had kind of a working document to play over i have a ton of onion skin rolls of it that i can share with you guys to work on yeah. if if you need different sizes or different additional copies there's no need to pay for that um just let me know what you need and i'll work with the engineers to get it to us cool right. yeah Thank it's you. a little easier for us to work with maybe uh but the onion skins are nice yeah yeah, yeah. yep and then you don't yeah. mark them up yeah exactly right. That's what I'd like because I'd like to add all the stuff on one page. Yeah. Cool. I got it. I got something. Here. Oh, yes. Like Jeff was talking about the Neighbor Grant to get the basketball hoop at Fifth Avenue, you were thinking, right? I was just reading in the newspaper about um, Minger Grant, so I clicked on their website and I didn't realize that the $5,000, the small recreational grants, you could do those anytime. I thought it was just the October and May? No, that's the one I was referring to. That's the mini grant. So we can do one of those a year. Is that because I, I clicked on their thing and it says that they can do them on a rolling basis yeah, with a right. turnaround right. of 45 days. So right. So yes, that that's what I mean. There's no deadline. Like they're, the bigger binger grants, they've got a, a spring and a fall okay. deadline submittal. But that $5,000 one, you get every entity can apply and receive one one a year one a year but okay. you can apply it any time during the oh, year oh get it okay. okay it made it sound like you could do it over yeah, and over that's what i understood days. that's what oh, i thought we can try but <laughs> that's what it's been explained so did you apply for the dbw or for the parks i mean could we i could we get more than one it as would well? be the city of manistee Okay, so the city will only get one. Yeah. yeah. Okay, okay, that's the way this is working. Okay. And if we want Thank to you. do a Minger grant in the future, do we need like city council permission to yes. apply for a Minger grant? Okay, we can't just go and Parks Commission apply for something. No, well, we could write it up from this body. Because well, exactly. normally it takes it takes a match, and so right. the council has to agree. Like the the Minger grants, they're very stringent on their whole process. We have to. Well, I showed you guys before. It's it's a stack of paperwork like that, um, but we're we're getting pretty good at it. Cool. And just just a thought I had on that when Sammy was talking, I know that they have geofence different areas in the community, and I'll have a side conversation with her. But when we apply for those grants, we always tell, and you guys have been there, we always talk to them and say, you know, Manistee has 15 parks, the city does, and 6,600 residents pay for that upkeep and that development and that operation but we know that the whole county this is their playground right, exactly. and I think it'd be fascinating to see how much of the county uses that playground how much how many people come into our parks from outside the area I, I bet those numbers are staggering and then combine it with some of the stuff that um, that Karen had had printed out that shows a community of the size and the population, how many acres of parks is average and how many right. um, parks per square mile is normal and how much investment in parks is in, we're way below, we're way high on the number of parks for the population yes. and we're way low, low on the investment. In exactly. Them. Um, and I, I think those numbers really stand out, especially when we're filling out grants and stuff like that. So. Um, I know that we've worked with Sammy already with some of this information on, on marketing the marina, and it's been a good collaboration. So it's really exciting to hear that mm -hmm. that they're interested in in showcasing the same thing you are as is, is the parks and making that better. So sorry, a little tangent. No, I agree with you, Jeff, on that. That the county is using the parks, and there's you know that's which is good, which is what we want but it, it's, it's supported by the city, yeah. so that's unique. Then, Sammy, I was gonna ask you, how do you get that near information? Like when they, you're saying that they're able to track, how do they track? That's, that was interesting to me, I thought, how do they know? So we, we use your cell phone data. If you are within our county for four hours, we register you as a visitor, 
Okay. And we have already, on our annual dashboard that we get, we have already eliminated anyone whose cell phone resides within 50 miles of the county lines because we are assuming that they're not visitors, they just live within nearby. So we've excluded Manistee residents. If you come through our county, then your cell phone gets pinged and then we know that you've been through our county. So and we know everything. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. When did you give the presentation to City Council? Mm -hmm. For a donation. Was, it, was that in August? Mm -hmm. So if you go back, she did a wonderful presentation to the city council and it showed a lot of the graphics and a lot of the data. It's pretty fascinating. Um, well, for Sleigh Bell, she was able to show how many people were at the parade from out of town and then it was able to break down where you came from. And, wow. and it shows a lot from, it shows, I think it was almost every state in the country, wasn't it? Yeah. It's amazing. We've already got most attractions in our hotels already geofenced. We can go back in time and just use our little mouse and geofence an area on a map. We essentially get an aerial view of the world. We can geofence an area and then tell the, I guess, the, the little guy inside your machine what time frame we want to look at, and it'll show us the pathway in of those people, how long they spent in an area, uh, what the most prevalent hour was for them. So like for Sleigh Bell, we geofenced all of River Street and saw where the clusters of people were throughout the evening, where they were from, um, how long they spent while they were there, what their education Look at that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> their finances. Yeah. Well, it's, she she converted it into maps. So if you look at the United States, there's there's hits all over. If you focus in in the Midwest, there's a lot from Northern Illinois and Ohio, and I mean it's really fascinating, and it, and it helps you to target. Then, well, if this is where they're coming from. Let's let's market them. Do you have to give authorization for that, or is that just something that they take from us without? Isn't that? Not you owning a cell phone. For the GPS, Sorry. I don't know who the people are. Like, I can't say this was Kelly Ruby, but I know that a cell phone from X location was here. So I don't know specific people. But the company that we do use can layer on credit card information and uh, help us better. To, like, we can look for if somebody has spent money on marine fuel in the last year, we can send them an ad. So, hmm. it, wow. it, it's That's as creepy as it is fascinating. Yeah. yeah. It, really is. it goes both ways. You're yeah. right. It really is. I'm like going, wow. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Right. We're just, no, I don't right. mean, I don't mean yeah, you. Sure. I mean, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the cell universe. It's, it's a data driven world, though. It really is. It is. It's wild. But it shows a lot and it gives you a lot of information. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Jesus. I'll probably have geofencing on my Facebook tonight when I look at it. You, you've done that. Ads. You've talked about something, and all of a sudden there's an ad that pops up, and yeah. that's the kind of stuff they're yeah, using maybe. it for. Right? That's her. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> anything, I don't have anything else, I think. I do. Karen. I, when I first started with the commission, I was given a pamphlet, like a three- or four-fold pamphlet about each park and what the amenities are in each park. Um, do we still have those? I think I got it from... Uh, I think I gave it to you. Yeah, do you yeah. have those? Mm -hmm. Are those still available? Mm -hmm. um, cool. I was talking to the um, owner at Z's Carts, Amy, mm -hmm. and I was telling her that I was from the Parks Commission, and she said that... You know, like, do you have any? And I said, oh, man, is that a great idea, right? The, the ultimate is going to be what someone yeah. talked about today right. on those destination cards. Mm -hmm. Exactly. That's yeah. going to be, yes. So the, the stuff that we have, I think there were old, old examples. Really old. Older, yeah, yes. Yeah, updated. Okay, so. It was just something for you to glance oh, at. That was, I love it. Yeah. I go to yeah. it all the time. It's got oh, everything geez. in it. Yeah, <laughs> Don't I mean. do that. <laughs> you know, it does. Yeah. It's got a lot of information right. in it. I do like it. Um, also with the art drop, my next door neighbor was the one that initiated that. She asked me if I had heard about it last year and I said no. She's uh, the executive director at the um, Legacy Art Park. 
um, Angie Quinn. So she was the one that asked me if I heard about that. So I was talking to her, and I, all of a sudden, I love art and I love parks. So we, I was putting it, spinning it around in my head, and I said, we, we can maybe do that. So just kudos to her for helping mm -hmm. out with that idea. Yeah, well, all of us. But I mean, you know, yeah, that's what actually was a catalyst behind it. I just have a couple things when you're done. Yeah. Okay. Um, so shift to seasons, shifts our workloads, you know. So now we're kind of starting to put the parks to bed a little bit. Um, we've shut off all the irrigation. We pulled the swim buoys out. It's always a sad time of year. I mean, pretty soon we're going to be pulling the walkways out, setting up snow fence. Um, the good news is we have all of our positions filled. Our last two new employees started this week. So we need to get them trained up, but they're in the mix right now. Um, I think I've explained to you and I won't go into all the detail, but we had a lot of people moving internally. So the two people that are moving into the parks won't be moved into the parks until November, but um, we're trying to get caught up with everything else. I've had mechanics and bridge tenders and welders and foremen cutting grass just to try to keep up with everything. So we're, we're, we're getting caught up on stuff now. Um, and then, um, yeah, that was all for me. Who are the two new parks? Who moved it, if you can say? Um, Scott McCoola, who is a bridge, currently a bridge tender, is moving into the parks. And Lee Miller, who works at the treatment, wastewater treatment plant, is moving into the parks. One of them the same kind of title as Mickey was? No, we're going to handle that a little bit differently since Larry Fenner's got tremendous experience and knowledge, but he's close to retirement. So, and with two new people in, I'm having Brandon oversee that, at least in the interim, until we get some people trained up and experienced. The only reason why I ask that is because we have those planners down at the Lions Pavilion. Brandon will be your point man for those Perfect. things. Okay, because yeah. they're going to need to be drained. Yeah, just be yeah. or else they'll freeze. Okay, cool. Thank you. Yep. Last thing, I was asked that question about the park, the flagpole for Fifth Avenue and the bench. So we pulled that down. I The kids painted it. I think that's one of those things that in the transition after Mickey left, it's still sitting there. We just need to take it down there and install it. And then I I didn't know what bench you were talking about. Someone just said it wasn't yeah. me, so I'm not sure either. When, the bench when we was were, taken but not returned. When we were digging out the sand from those, Larry discovered that the ornamental iron on one side is broken on that bench. Okay. So we'll get that repaired and reinstalled. Okay. So, like the flag, do you think that'll get up yet this fall, or when? When we get caught up on stuff, yeah. Okay. So I do have a question about the lights down at the marina. Um, Katie had contacted me about uh, there's a the fence is out and three trees are out, and I spoke with Jim from Shine, and he said that it's got to be the power source. So can that be looked at? And if the power source works, then I can contact Jim to come down. I'm, I'm not sure what you mean, power source. He thinks it's the electrical yeah. system. Yeah. And the lights, the lights work along the moon, Katie. Now the uh, taller lights. Is that? That is a power source. I've okay. been trying to get top line down there. Okay. They, they're gonna. Have, there's a short at circuit. They're gonna have to hand dig the entire thing. So our window is spring or fall. I, I mean, I don't want to dig up that whole facility in the summer. Does that include the lights that are down along the river walk? Those, that's section? the ones I'm referring to. Oh, I thought you meant the ones up. No, I mean the ones along the river walk, the tall okay. ones okay. though, not the, sh they're tall, they're like street light size. Yeah. The white ones. The white ones, okay. yes. Those, those would be nice to have. Is, is the one that was burned out up near the, um, Shuffleboard, has that been fixed? One of the tall lights was out? One of those are out, the one by the shuffleboard is. That's why the that's the tall one, not the that's why the other lights are out. They're right fixed. That's fixed? I fixed them. I don't know. I just hit the GFI and they came back. Oh. She fixed them. <laughs> Good job, Kate. It was just the breaker. She yeah. said there was a GFI trip. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Cool. All right. So they're working. The so, so the twinkling lights are working now yeah. too? Mm -hmm. oh. oh, the GFI yeah. just, okay. Yeah, I just, I just hit the reset button and they all came on. <laughs> so when did, when did you know that? 
<laughs> yesterday, I think it was yesterday. Yeah. Where is that? Is it inside the marina that? You yeah, the new the... tree lights. The sh but the GFCI button is that inside? No, that's out. That's outdoors where they're plugged into. So I don't know what tripped it or how. What happened? Happen to see they're out. We can walk over and maybe. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Hopefully they stay out. Okay. Is there a motion to adjourn? Somebody plugged in. Make a motion to adjourn. Second. Meeting adjourned.